A student online sent me this problem to go ahead and solve. Now it's a little bit long, so let me go ahead and read it. The hypotenuse of a right triangle is one more than twice the length of the shortest leg. The second leg is one less than twice the length of the shortest leg. What is the length of each side? Ooh, that's a lot, even to read. So let's go ahead and write it out and try to extract the most important information that we need from this word problem. All right, so now I got everything written out here. And what I wanna do is just kind to think about what are some tools, what are some information now that we can extract from this that we can use to be able to solve this? Because I don't like doing word problems just as much as probably you don't like doing word problems. And especially I don't like doing word problems on a live stream because I have to read through it and my brain has to like digest the information and everybody's kind of watching me solving. It's actually kind of stressful. So. With a little bit of time, I think this will make this a little bit easier that we can just take our time. I'm not worried about, you know, making a mistake in front of a live stream. I just, I just wanna be explaining this and teaching it like you are there right inside of my class. All right, so we have a hypotenuse, that's important, of a right triangle. Now, so if I have a right triangle, immediately the first thing I'm gonna do is just draw a right triangle. All right, and then we have different lengths of this side. So you could use X, Y, and Z, or you could use A, B, and C. One of the reasons why I like using A, B, and C is because if you remember, the most famous theorem of all when it comes to right triangles is going to be the Pythagorean theorem. Now, I'm not sure if we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem just yet, but just to kind of remember it, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The other thing that right triangles allows us to do is going to be to be able to use our trigonometric functions, which in this case, it doesn't seem like we're talking about them. And when they're talking about the lengths of the side, so I'm betting the Pythagorean theorem is gonna be pretty useful. All right, so we have all this information on the sides. So it says the hypotenuse is a relationship of the shortest leg. We have the second leg and hypotenuse, shortest leg, and then a second leg. So let's go and identify everything in this case. So I'll have A, let's have that going to be the shortest leg. B, I'll have that be the second leg. And then C, obviously that's going to be the hypotenuse. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to be able to read out these definitions or these words and try to create a algebraic expression that is going to represent them. So the hypotenuse of a right triangle is one more than twice the length of the shortest leg. So the hypotenuse is in relationship to the shortest leg. The second leg is one less than twice the length of the shortest leg. What is the length of each side? So the hypotenuse and the second leg are both in relationship to the shortest leg. So I'm gonna have the shortest leg just equal to an A. Let's go and read it. The second leg is one less, so that's minus one, than twice the length of the shortest leg. So twice the length of the shortest leg would be a 2A, and then it says one less, so we're going to subtract one. The hypotenuse is one more, that's plus one, than twice the length. So that's going to be a 2A plus one, right? 2A is going to be twice the length, and then one more would be plus one. So the cool thing about this is, if you look at this equation, I only have one variable, right? I have everything in relationship with A. So rather than using B, I can use 2A minus one. Rather than using C, I can use a 2A plus one. So if I wanna be able to solve for A, at least one variable, right? If you have one equation, let's go ahead and find our value A, because once I know what A is, I can find the length of all three sides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in all three of these in terms of A into my Pythagorean theorem. All right, now I have an equation. I just need to go ahead and solve for A. Now, just remember a 2A minus one squared is gonna be a 2A minus one times a 2A minus one. So we're gonna have to go ahead and use the distributive property. Do not do this as a 4A squared minus one. Don't do that, right? Don't distribute the square, the squaring from there. But you can go ahead and do it. I don't really wanna go through on the time, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do this in my head and show you what this would be. But if you wanna go and work it out on the side, then you can, well, I'll do one of them. So let's do, I'll just do one of them because I don't know, I'm a teacher. I always like showing the work. I always feel like there's always one student that's like, I don't understand how you're doing this work in your head. Can you just show the answer? And I'm like, yes, I'll show the answer. And so I apologize for those of you that are like, how'd you get this answer? I already know how to do this. Why don't we just move through the problem? So there we go. There's one of them, and you'll notice that the same thing is gonna change. It's just going to be when it's a positive, it'll just be a positive 4a. So a squared is going to be a 4a squared minus a 4a plus one equals a 4a squared plus 4a plus one, okay? So that product is gonna be exact same, one's positive, one's negative. Now you notice I have a's on both sides. And if you remember solving an equation, you always gotta get the a's to the same side. So first thing, let's go ahead and get the, if we look at this, let's go and get the a squareds of both sides. Well, if I subtract a 4a squared on both sides, those are just going to subtract out. If I subtract a one on both sides, those are gonna go ahead and divide out. So I'm left with an a squared 
minus a 4a equals a positive 4a. Now, if I get this a over, I get to subtract this, a negative 4a minus a 4a, a squared minus an 8a is equal to zero. So I have a quadratic equal to zero. When we have quadratics, we always wanna go ahead and set them equal to zero. Now I can either use factoring, or in this case, I can factor out the GCF, which is in this case is gonna be a, and apply the zero product property to go ahead and solve. So by factor on an a, I get a times a minus eight is equal to zero. Therefore, applying the zero product property, a can equal to zero, or a minus eight is equal to zero. So therefore, a is equal to a positive eight. Now, remember, a represents the side length of a triangle. If a is equal to zero, ladies and gentlemen, you're not gonna have a triangle. You can't have a side length that's zero. It's not going to be a triangle anymore. Like if that's zero, you wouldn't even have a triangle. So a, in this case, cannot equal zero. So that means a is going to equal to an eight. But again, what was the question? The question was, what is the length of each side? So A is equal to eight. B is equal to a two times eight, right? Because I can plug, replace A with eight, minus one. Two times eight is 16, minus one equals a 15. C equals a two times eight, which is going to be 16, plus one, which equals 17. Now we found the side lengths for A, B, and C. Hope this helped.